Close your eyes and come back to the same place. Come back to the breath. Every day, every day, every day. Someone once asked to John Lee, how are you going to gain any insight just watching the breath? All it has is in and out. And as John Lee said, well, if that's all you see, that's all there is. If the question is, what do you see here? What are you looking for? Because the breath is like a mirror for the mind. And if you're going to look at your mind, it's like looking at your body. If you look in one mirror today and look at a different mirror the next day and a different mirror the next day, you'll see differences, but you don't know. Is it the difference in the mirror or is it in the, in the body? But if it's the same mirror day after day, then you know if there's any change, okay, it's not the mirror. It's the body. In the same way, the breath is coming in, going out, coursing through the body. We try to get it as still as possible. And then you look at your mind. And of course, you have to look at your mind even before you get the mind still, because you've got to figure out if it's not settling down, what's wrong. But because you're engaged in the same activity again and again, you get to see subtle differences. And this will be an important part of the practice, because after all, the movements of the mind are pretty subtle. When greed begins, it's subtle. When anger begins, it's subtle. Delusion, fear, lust, jealousy, all these things start out very small. And then we let them grow, because we don't notice them. So if, you, if you can't see the subtleties of the breath, how are you going to catch the subtleties of the mind? So this is practice not only in looking at the mind, but also learning how to look with care. Make this your familiar territory. Because after all, when aging comes, where is it going to come? It's going to come right here. Illness comes, it comes right here. You get your body, and when it's young, you look at it and say, how could this ever get old? Well, it does. When you're feeling really healthy, how could it ever get sick? Well, it does get sick. You go, how could this die? What's well, going to die? And it's going to happen right here. So it's good to know the territory right here. So we do practice in order to develop a, sen develop a sense of having had enough disenchantment. But don't get disenchanted with the practice. And John Fuhr had a student who was practicing every day, every day, imagining her body falling apart. And then as soon as one body fell apart, she'd get another image of herself. She'd have it fall apart, and then another image of herself would come back, and she'd have to keep doing this. And she looked at it, it was like a, as she said, it was like a whole platter full of fish waiting to be cooked. You cook one, but then there's another one, then there's another one, there's another one. When was it going to come to an end? And as John Fuang said, can we do this in order to gain a sense of dispassion, disenchantment, but don't get disenchanted with the practice. Get disenchanted with the mind that likes to keep on creating suffering for itself, even though it should know better. But have a sense of passion for the practice. Because if there's a way out, this is it. So pay careful attention. Each time the breath comes in, each time it goes out, try to be right here. That way when something subtle comes up, you'll be there. You'll be able to see it and do something about it. <laughs>